Tony Bruno. Plus, it's back and better than ever. A preview of Joseph and the amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat at the Chan Hassan Dinner Theater. Showcase Minnesota starts right now. Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday to you. Welcome to Showcase Minnesota. I'm Rob Hudson. Hi, Rob Hudson. Hello, Corbin Seitz. I'm Corbin Seitz. Yes, and, you are. Uh, There's welcome an echo in. in here. Yes, welcome in. Welcome in. We're glad that you're here. I have a little bit of a sore throat, so I've got my hot tea with me today. But you know what? Yeah, mm -hmm. you look good, though. You always do. I was you. just well, telling you know, Corbin. I prop myself up with my makeup, basically. <laughs> <laughs> on the days I don't You brought some with you too. Well, I what wanted I didn't say that for that reason, but I wanted to, you know, every once in a while you run across a product that really surprises you and pleases you beyond what you thought. This stuff is called Being True. Here, hold that. There you go. Mm -hmm. And this is what it looks like. Now, Rocco Altabelli sells this, and I have to say, Rocco Altabelli gives me my makeup to wear for the show. Right. They're one of our sponsors, uh, right up front, so you know that. But they got in this new line of makeup, and they said, come by, and we'll give you some of it and try it out. I love this stuff. Excellent. You will love this stuff. What it is is a cream uh, makeup. It's makeup, but it's in your lotion. It's lotion and makeup together. It comes on this wand, and then you just dab it on your face and then smooth it around with a, with a sponge or a brush or your finger or whatever you want to do. And you don't need to wear moisturizer underneath it because it feels so good. And I have kind of dry skin, so that really works. And in the summer, it's all you need. It is so lightweight that it's all you need. Now, I know that this is probably boring to you, but you know what I mean, ladies. When you buy makeup and it doesn't work, you think, gosh, I've spent my money and it does. This stuff is cool. Rocco Altabelli Salon. Wake up, bro. Oh, yeah. Being true. I'm just telling you. I was just it's thinking lovely. about fishing on Mille Lacs. I don't know. Did you? I don't, I we lost him there for a minute. He was transported to Lake Mille Lacs. But anyway, Speaking so yeah. Speaking of makeup and stuff, uh, patchouli. Patchouli yes. smell has nothing to do with the band except the name. Uh, patchouli is going to be performing for us live. Here's a copy of their new CD. I don't know. Did you CD. sniff their neck? <laughs> no, I didn't. No, I didn't. But you know what patchouli smells like. Yeah. Uh, they're part. They're part of the River Song Music Festival. They'll be performing for us. We're going to preview that later in the show. Also, comedian Andy Kindler is here. Uh, I would have to go out on a limb and say one of the top three funniest men in the world. Really? I, in my opinion, the guy, he's hilarious. He's performing at Acme this weekend. We get and, them uh, all through here, don't we? We are so lucky. I'm really looking forward to talking to him. And I hope he's watching in the green room right now. I love you. You're great. <laughs> now come out and have a great <laughs> have a great show with hey, us today. And come hang on. with us today because uh, before we dash off to Rachel, uh, if you want a chance to maybe see Elton John and get, get a snap of him on a red carpet and Gladys Knight and a bunch of other celebrities, we're going to tell you how to do it this weekend. Excellent. All right. Let's get the show on the road here in just a moment combining two of my favorites absolutely steak and pizza yeah. but first a look what's coming up today on rachel ray all new would you pay 200 bucks for vinegar 182 for evoo or 50 dollars for butter it could not be worth 50 dollars oh. our save versus splurge food edition puts high-end foods to the ultimate test then brawling with crocs and snakes it's just another day for brady bar you're nuts you know that yeah right? that's all right so what's his real secret to cheating death the day i stop being scared is the day i need to find another job Watch Rachel Ray every afternoon at 2 here on CARE 11. Now, over to Corbin for more in the show. Okay, thanks, Mr. Rob. First up this morning, outdoor cooking. The folks at No Name Steaks are right here in our very own backyard with a quick and very unique recipe. And here with the lowdown is Amy Valick. She's come back to visit us again. Hi, Hi Amy. Hi, great to be back. Well, it's lovely to be here with you on this gorgeous, warm, sunny Definitely. summer morning. And we are talking about... Uh, pizza on the grill, but you're talking about a very easy way to do it. It sounds like to me as a mom, who's yes. usually the one responsible for getting dinner on the yeah, table. Yeah, we are right into grilling season and everyone gets used to the same 
burgers and hot dogs and steaks, which is great, yeah. but we're going to change it up a little bit and we're going to make steak into pizza. Yeah. And this is the No Name Steak Barbecue Pizza. Let's talk about No Name for just a minute. Sure. I have to confess, I have these in my freezer. I use the salmon all the time. I'm in love with the salmon. Uh, pork chops, there's chicken, there's chicken. everything. We've got a lot. Uh, talk about this because you're a Minnesota company. We are. We're located in St. Michael. We have about 700 employees. And, uh, Boy, that's big. Yes, and we're celebrating our 30th anniversary this year. That is so we've really been something. For a while. Fine quality Definitely as well. Definitely high quality. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Okay. All right. So, where do we start here, and how do we incorporate these into? You bet. Our well, we've got on the grill right now our no-name steaks, the original steaks. We're best known for our original steaks. So those are grilling. We also, in this recipe, it calls for caramelized onions. Mm -hmm. So what I've done is I've just made a easy tin foil pan, little olive oil, salt and pepper, and onions. Lovely. So while those are cooking, we can start with our pizza. And what we've done is we've just purchased pre-made pizza crust. Yeah, see, and that's what I said when I said this is easy because yes. you don't have to worry about making everything homemade. And and by the way, the onions, do we just leave them on there till they're kind of clear? Till they're kind of caramelized. We've and got gooey, some done right little, here. Yeah, golden. Yep. Okay, Perfect. so just watch them. Yeah. yeah. And then what we're going to do, like we said, this is a little different spin on pizza. We're going to take barbecue sauce, oh. your favorite Ooh. barbecue sauce, and we're just going to spread that out okay. on the Kids pizza. Kids can do this. Kids can do this. It's very versatile. You could pick whatever sauce you want. This is a great time to, to raid your uh, garden for vegetables and herbs. You can put Wonderful whatever kind idea. of meat you want on. You know, no-name meat. We've got, like you said, yes. the chicken. We've got pork. Yes. So you can use whatever you'd like. Yes, so absolutely. So you spread that on, and mm -hmm. then what you're going to do is you're going to slice some no-name steak, and we've already done mm. this for you. It smells really for good. You I don't know if everybody out there loves steak as much as I do. Now, you're putting it on in really big chunks. Yeah, you can put it on as big a chunks as you want, as much or as little as you want, but you'd fill up this platter, and I know in essence I'm even time, thinking, too, Amy, you, you can do that, but I, I'm even thinking this is almost like uh, an hors d'oeuvre pizza you if you wanted that to sort of be the meal. Definitely. Because it's like a heavy hors d'oeuvre sliced up. Okay, Definitely. so we've got that so on we've got the, Once we've got all the steaks on there, then you're going to take your caramelized onions. You'd spread those all over the, the pizza. I love everything. Let me move this over out of the sure. way. I love everything you're doing right now. <laughs> and then <laughs> we've got good. roasted red peppers, which you find in a jar. So yes. again, something easy. Spread those Some on. people like to do those on their grill too, but if again, if you're talking easy, that's exactly. what we're talking today. And then we've got uh, both mozzarella and cheddar cheese. Mm -hmm. So a combination of both. You sprinkle that all over the top of the pizza. And finally, we're going to top it off with some fresh thyme. Like mm -hmm. I mentioned, if you've got a garden, you've got fresh herbs, it's a right. great time to use them. Now, uh, for people, obviously, we do this on the grill, but you can do this in the oven, you too? You bet. You can bake it 375 degrees in the oven. And because everything's done, you're just waiting for the cheese to melt. Okay. So what we would do is we pretty, just take pretty. this. Have we oiled the grill or oiled, we oiled the... Yeah, I forgot to mention that. We put oil, brushed olive oil, on the bottom so that it won't stick. The bottom, the bottom of, of the of dough. The crust. Okay. Yep. All right. Now, how long are we doing this? So what you'd want to do is just close up your grill. And it, because everything's already done, you're just waiting for the Have cheese a to melt. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Enjoy Get your cold time. Beer, talk and this with doesn't heat up your kitchen. You know, yes. using your yes. oven or your uh, grill as your summer oven works out perfectly. Mm -hmm. All right. So how long did you say in there? It's all up to you. Waiting till the cheese melts. Just and I turn your grill down to low mm -hmm. because you don't want it to start burning the bottom of the crust. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Now, if you have kids who m maybe, you know, want something different than steak. You've got the chicken. You've We've got, got you've got all kinds of choices to put on there. We do. Um, so what's next for No Name? Are you all going to come out with something new that we I haven't eaten did. yet? We just came out with Steakhouse Burgers, and they're burgers oh. that have mixed in ingredients like roasted red peppers, onions, and mozzarella cheese, bacon, and cheddar, and mushroom and Swiss. So okay. those you can find in your grocery store right now. Excellent. I'll be looking yes. for those. I will be looking for those. Pleasure to see you again. Thank you. And it's thank you for making here. this so easy and delicious for us. You're very welcome. No name has you covered all summer long. But they really do. Yes. They really, really do. Uh, for a copy of today's uh, recipes, send a self-addressed stamped envelope to the numbers on your screen, uh, to the address on your screen, excuse me, or you can log on to our website, showcaseminnesota.com, and just search under the main dish category. And for more information on no name pre premium meat and seafood, visit nonamesteaks.com.
pretty delicious. Smells really good out of here. A lot more ahead this Friday morning. Coming up, new flicks at the box office. Will fans find it offensive or funny? We review Bruno. And Donnie Marie's nephew, Justin Osmond, joins us with info on this weekend's star-studded we're talking Elton John here. Uh, Starkey Hearing Gala Plus, a preview of next Stars weekend's we River Song Music day. Festival with grassroots band like the a puzzle fits together. Staring at the same blue sky and sitting on the same big. Good for us. Not yet. Doesn't even hamburgers for you. Yes, hamburgers. Well, hey, the I hear you. Hello. I told him to bring it. Welcome back to the show. Sasha Baron Cohen is back with another shock and awe comedy. Bruno hits theaters so today and like his earlier empty. film Borat, the Come comedian on. once again dishes I mean, out his unique brand of humor on unsuspecting anime. folks, but will moviegoers get the joke or simply squirm in their seats? Film critic Jeff Strickler is here with his review of that and more. Uh, you know, is it just Borat take two? <sighs> In a lot of ways. I is mean, it? it's the same exact formula. In some cases, even re repeating some of the same g gags. I mean, it's mm -hmm. the same gig all over again. The, you know, Borat was a huge, huge, huge hit. And that raises the question, was it almost too successful for his own good? Let's take a look. You find your son. I swapped him. You swapped him? Swapped, 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 swapped the baby for what? For an iPod. What? Not just any iPod, one that was like limited edition, red, a U2 iPod heard of it. Is your baby you know, the Borat worked for two reasons. One, it worked because nobody knew who Sasha Baron Cohen was, so he went into character and did sort of a candid camera thing. That doesn't play anymore. Why? Because too many people are on to the gag. It isn't, candid camera isn't funny if the people who are being uh, uh, spoofed know it. And right. I think there's some hysterical scenes like this one here where he's conducting interviews with, with parents. Uh, that's funny. But there's uh, two other things like this scene in the, in where he goes into boot camp where they're clearly in on the gag. And you can tell from the way they're acting that they know it's not real. Mm -hmm. And it just takes a lot of the fun out of it. The other reason where it worked is because it was shocking and it caught us by surprise. But again, we know that going into this film, we know he's going to do the same thing and he's got to, the only way he can elevate it, Rob, is by going even more, which it no longer becomes shocking, actually just becomes gross. Right. Um, and it's just way, way, way too much. And, and this is one of those films where 
I mean, I'll be honest with you. I don't understand how this thing qualified for a PG-13 rating. I, really? I don't. I mean, to me, I look at that film and I'm saying NC-17. It's rated. It, so it's, what are you telling parents right now? It's what are you telling parents R. right now? What I'm telling you, it's an NC-17 movie that somehow got through a loophole and got an R rating, but don't believe the R rating. Okay. At all. It okay. is. I, I mean, I don't know where it came from. Two stars, zero for the kids. All right. There we go. And that's all over the place, too, because out in New York... They gave it a, a, what, New York was a few more stars. Yeah. L.A. was, they gave it one it's all, star. It's all over the Ebert place. Ebert gave it four. Yeah. So, I mean, okay. it's, it's really getting a wide. That's Pretty fine. subjective. I'm just just worry, warn parents about the fact that that is an NC-17 movie that somehow snuck into an R rating, and I don't know how they did it. All right. There all we right. go. All right. Our next movie is the war drama, The Hurt Locker. This mm. one looks a little more up my alley. I think so. You know, the war, movies about the war on terror have never been big at the box office yet. That could change with this very intense story, not so much about the war, but about the guys who are fighting it, in particular, a squad that's assigned to defuse bombs. Let's take a look. So if everything looks okay when I get down there, I'm just going to set it up and we'll bip it. Give these people something to think about. I want them to know if they're going to leave a bomb on the side of the road for us, we're just going to blow up their little road. Sounds good. Craving a burger, is that strange? Not for you. No. Okay. <laughs> Helmet on. Happy trails. <laughs> now, this doesn't really take a side in the war. It's not pro-war. It's not anti-war. It's about these, this, these guys who are really become adrenaline junkies. They get all caught up. They're not, they're, they're not even focused on the war so much as they focus on the adrenaline rush they get from defusing these bombs and sticking their noses in places that no one else dares to go. One of the things I like about this, Rob, is that, you know, it stars Jeremy Renner, Anthony Mackie, and Brian Gary, and you're saying, who? That's part of the fun of this movie. If it, you don't know what they established very early on in this film that no character in this movie is safe. Mm -hmm. It's not like, you know, you bring in, a, a, you know, an Arnold Schwarzenegger type guy and you know, you know how many danger he's going to be and he's going to survive. In this movie, nobody is safe. And so that adds to the, it adds to the edge. There's a real intense edge to this film, which we also have with the hyperatic ed editing. I mean, it's just, a, it's, it, it gets your heart pumping. It looks pretty intense. It's very intense. So we're going to give this thing three and a half stars, zero for wow. the kids again. Again, just because it's so, so intense. Wow. I, you know, it, I like Blown Away. Yeah. Tammy Lee Jones, it was a great yeah. movie. But this, I mean, this is really going on. It's, it's almost yeah. like a documentary. You know, it's this is really of, going on over of, the Middle you know, East right now. Yeah, and a lot of handheld work makes it look like a documentary too. Saving Private Ryan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, very, that's a good comparison. All yeah. right. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> going for your job. There we go. Um, okay, video of the week is knowing. You know, and Rob, you know, it's usually a problem when a movie is described as being by the numbers. But in the case of this science fiction thrill, it's a description of the plot. Nicholas Cage plays a scientist who believes that a series of mysterious numbers can predict future disasters, including one that could wipe out all of mankind. Let's take a look. I was up all night going over this. I went through that list again and again, and I tried to fault it, and I couldn't. But I've matched these numbers to the dates of every major global disaster for the last 50 years in perfect sequence, except for three. And these events haven't occurred yet, starting with this one. So tomorrow, Somewhere on the planet, this number string predicts that 81 people are going to die. When a time capsule from the 1950s is opened, one of the things inside is a seemingly random list of numbers. Cage deduces that the numbers are the dates of every major disaster in the last 50 years. Sounds crazy, but the really crazy part is that there are dates in the list that haven't come up yet, including the big one that could destroy life as we know it. Now all Cage has to do is convince the rest of the world that he's not the one who's crazy. The sci-fi element gets a little more prominent as the plot evolves, but Cage makes keeping the story grounded his number one priority. I'm still gripping the chair here oh, from the Hurt Locker. Yeah, like I was saying, just that 30-second yeah. clip, I was like, wow, Definitely that does look intense. have decaf before you go see that thing, because if you're, if you're <laughs> wired at all, it's going to... Were you grabbing the seat? I mean, I do intense. that. Yeah. Like, oh, whoa. All yeah. right. Great job. Have a wonderful weekend. You too. Thank you so much. Still ahead, rolling out the red carpet for an A-list cause. More on how the stars are stepping out in the Twin Cities to help children in need. And comedian Andy Kindler is going to stop by to tell us about his shows this weekend at Acme, plus a preview of Chan Hassan Dinner Theater's Joseph the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. Please stay tuned. Joseph, the thing will never forget.
Hello. Hello. Do you want to feed this up the front of your shirt, and okay. then I will clip it on your collar? On my shirt or my jacket? Oh. In today's Community Corner, an all-star event to benefit children with hearing loss. The Starkey Hearing Foundation is gearing up for its ninth annual gala, complete with some very big name celebrities and public red carpet event. And Justin Osman is here to tell us more. Welcome, Justin. Thank you. you know, it's funny because I, I, we always go in and meet our guests before the show starts, say hello, welcome them. And uh, I walked into the green room. There were lots of men sitting in there I immediately knew who you were because you look like an Osmond. Your uh, dad is Meryl. Yes, ma'am. Yep, I'm the proud son of Meryl, and I love him to death. And so. he was the, the lead singer of the Osmonds, you see, when, when they were forming, and uh -huh. really a, a big influence. We're going to talk about the event in just a minute, talk okay. about the gala, but I want to talk about your story a little bit, which brings us to how you got yeah. connected with Starkey, because uh, you have been hearing impaired all of your life. Yes, ma'am. I, I was born, and just imagine uh, being born into the Eisman family and not being able to hear. You know, that was a challenge for me. And, uh, but throughout the year, I came up with my little personal motto, I may have a, a hearing loss, but that hearing loss doesn't have me. And thanks to Starkey, you know, they provided me with some hearing aids. The, the technology is absolutely amazing. In fact, I can hear so well, I can hear what you're thinking. Well, <laughs> I can believe that because you know what I'm thinking is, how do you hear me so well and uh, you speak so well? Thank you. It, you know, with, with um, the good hearing technology, it helped you develop better speech. Mm -hmm. And so over time, I had to take a lot of speech therapy. And, you know, again, thanks to my dad and my mom, they put me into some really good program so that I could be able to speak better. Do you read lips at all or is it all just hearing? It's both. I do both. Uh, but I do rely a lot on, on, the, on the lip reading. Uh -huh. Do you? You're so very good at it. Oh, you would, okay. No one would ever dream that you had any <laughs> uh, challenges hearing. Thanks. Now, um, let's talk a little bit about this event and, and your work that you do with Starkey. Starkey is based in Eden Prairie, Minnesota, uh -huh. big company. Um, and they give away tons of hearing devices to kids all over the world every year? Yes, ma'am. We provide more than 50,000 hearing aids a year uh, to needed children all around the world. Uh, we're, we are the worldwide uh, leader in providing uh, these hearing devices and promoting hearing health awareness uh, to over 86 different countries as well. And I've had the privilege to go on many of those. Missions. What's it like when you approach these children and you see them here for the first time? Oh my goodness, you know, it's like literally the best way I can explain it is like uh, you turn on uh, like Christmas morning 
and the, the Christmas tree comes on and everybody's just so excited. They get in their Christmas present and that's their present. They're getting that hearing aid and hearing their mom's voice for the very first time. It's something that we take for granted uh, every single day, you know, being able to hear just the fact that we can hear each other right now, everyday conversation. Yeah. Um, it, it is. It's, it's a miracle. You all were helping a bunch of kids. You don't only help people in other countries, mm -hmm. 86 countries, I think, but, but right here in the United States. And you were doing an event in Eden Prairie with some uh, local kids or kids from the America. What, what happened? Uh, it was so wonderful. Yesterday we helped 75 kids uh, right here in the Twin City. And it was, it was miraculous. You know, just one quick story. There was a family that came in and the two kids have never heard their mom's voice before. Because the whole family was deaf, yeah. wasn't it? It Was that the same family? Okay. Uh -huh. And it was great. So uh, yes, we, we don't target just uh, all around the world, but right here in your hometown of the Twin Cities, where we're basically based. Yeah, yeah. All right, we gotta get to the gala event because uh, you raised $5 million there last year, huge, and it all goes toward this. Now, who's going to be there? Big stars, and you can come to the red carpet, anyone can. There's Marley Matlin, and bring Goldie home. Bring your camera, right? Who's gonna uh, be there? Uh, we've got we've got a uh, lot of great stuff here. We've got Gladys Knight. We've got uh, Elton John coming. Uh, we've also got Billy Crystal. He's gonna be our MC. <laughs> uh, Tony Bennett, <laughs> Lou Ferrigno, the Hulk. Right. Uh, I saw Buzz Aldrin, the astronaut. Arnold Palmer's there. A bunch of TV people. Mm -hmm. Uh, Norm Crosby. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we have about 50 oh. different celebrities coming in. Oh, so we're going to tell you how you can get more information about this because if you want to grab your camera, go down, do a little celebrity watching, it's going to be a lot of fun. Thank you for stopping by, Justin. Uh, Good luck with all this. Thank you. The Soul the World May Hear Awards Gala is this Sunday at the St. Paul River Center in St. Paul. And to find out more about the Starkey Hearing Foundation, just visit starkeyhearingfoundation.org and you can find out about the event as well. And now over to Rob for more in the show. All right, thanks a lot, Corbin. Switching gears now to another fun night on the town. Andy Kindler is a regular on The Late Show with David Letterman, and he's in town this weekend for a series of shows at Acme Comedy Company, and we're happy to have him with us this morning. Uh, it's great to have you here, man. I'm very excited. Do you get to Minneapolis? Are you in town for the Celebrity Gala? Uh, is it, you what's you could be the, what, what they're what the Starkey celebrity gala. Hey, uh, do I you am get, a celebrity. Yes, you are. And I, whenever I'm around, it's a gala. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> uh, you know, you you are you're popular for your your stint on Everyone Loves Raymond. A lot right. of people may recognize you for that. You're on Doctor Katz. I was on. But Dr. what Katz. you're most famous for is your lampooning of right. fellow comedians. Yes, which is uh, which has gotten me in a lot of trouble. <laughs> well, I don't know. It, your your comments about Dane Cook were. We're pretty funny and controversial at the same time. Right. Uh, do you want me to tell you what the comments were? Yeah, or absolutely. Go, do, for yeah. It. Go for it. I said, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, I, I feel like uh, with Dane Cook, I don't know what, what it's like a phenomenon. I, I, now, I know how, <laughs> now I know how Germany felt in the 30s. You know, it's like a guy gets popular. We, don't, we can't figure out what the appeal is. And, uh, but I, then my, my joke is that Dane Cook is, uh, is worse than Hitler because at least Hitler had a point of view. <laughs> <laughs> that and I can't see how that would upset Dane how, Cook. In those why movies. would anybody be upset about that? <laughs> Dear, well, what did what did Dane Cook? Did he come back with anything at you? Well, no, he had. I've in a couple of interviews now. Uh, I, someone said that now he thinks me going after him is like Don Rickles going after him. So I thought <laughs> ah, that, I thought that was pretty good. Well, he has a good sense of humor. That's good company to be in. I mean. Well, you know, my only objection to him is that he has absolutely no material at all, and that's. I guess I'm jealous because I, I, if I had known. <laughs> Before I started comedy, that you didn't need material; you just need a lot of hair gel. <laughs> right. And see, his he would never be able to do the, an well, interview he, like this because he has to be around. Well, he's and, never done "Everyone Loves Raymond." Everybody that's loves right. Raymond. I have the credits. That's right. And uh, the residuals are going down. Though. You also do a state of comedy. Yeah. And, uh, every year, is it up at the Just for Laughs? In Festival? two weeks, I will be in Montreal, uh, Canada. I do a speech in front of all the industry people. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's going on? People I don't know. Are, oh, uh, Steve's <laughs> back there. Uh, often during our segment, <laughs> someone, Dane Cook's back there. Someone gets cereal. He just caught Dane Cook sneaking in. <laughs> Feel free to come and get cereal <laughs> and other belongings during my segment. What uh, <laughs> What is the state of comedy right now? Uh, well, there is no more comedy. It's all it's all reality shows. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I, I love reality shows because when I see someone in a supermarket, I say to myself, uh, and I'm in line with them. I go, 
what's this person really like? Why can't they have a show about them? <laughs> That's well, it's true. And then even the celebrities <laughs> are uh, are on shows like I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here. <laughs> right. How, how did they come I, up with these I catchy titles? I didn't know uh, Blagojevich's wife would be a, a celebrity. I she, thought that was kind of a stretch. I think that that uh, I knew when I saw her <laughs> that that was uh, that was the way well, to go. Real, real, He's entertaining, but real, she really real ratings grabber. Uh, you're you're on uh, Letterman quite a bit, and and you mentioned we just off camera that you, you like to make fun of other comedians just don't make fun of Leno. You're oh kid, no, I, I mean. do make fun. Well no, I my whole thing I do make fun of Leno a lot and uh, my question is will he be able to be edgy at 10 o'clock like he is at 11.30? <laughs> I hope he doesn't have to dumb down his comedy well, what do you or make it more mainstream. What do you think of the job Conan's doing? I like Conan. I can't mm -hmm. make fun of Conan uh, because I think he's funny mm -hmm. but uh, so I, I'll stay away from him. For humor about My him. favorite late night guy is uh, Craig Ferguson. I think he's genius. Yeah, I don't. I don't watch. I don't watch. You Craig that, that late? No, it's just that uh, I basically watch programs that I'm on because mm -hmm. I'm very self-involved mm -hmm. and self-absorbed. Mm -hmm. So if I'm not on it, <laughs> I figure, what's the point? <laughs> you, uh, you also. I, I don't know if it was Dane Cook you directed this ad, but you talk about a tired old formula of comedy. What is the tired old? Well, formula? you know, the thing is, uh, comedians they rely on the same uh, 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 formulas all the time. Well, like for example, the catchphrase, like mm -hmm. Larry the Cable Guy. He, you know, he doesn't really have many jokes, but get her done. Yeah. Get her done. Here's and all your of a sudden, sign. Yeah. yeah, here's your, so I, and I tried that. Many, you know, I've tried my <laughs> what own. What was your catch? Well, I've what? tried different ones. Just shows to go you. <laughs> same old, same old. I don't think so, Andre. <laughs> <laughs> but they don't catch on. These didn't catch on no. for you, Andy. I can't. I don't I imagine why. I, I, the thing is, I want to <laughs> stay below the radar. I don't want to sure. be too successful. <laughs> I mean, for example, when I go to a check into the hotel to avoid people coming and bothering me, I check in under my own name. No one at that point will think of. Well, me. like I said at the top of the interview, uh, Doctor Katz. I mean, it doesn't get any bigger than that. I, I get love recognized that show. from that, and that's a cartoon. I, I know. Him. I love that. I show. love Jonathan Katz. He's yes, the best. Absolutely. Hey, thank you. Welcome thank you. to Minneapolis. Come back again. Come and I'm going to be at show. Acme. Uh, I'll read that right now. Oh, you yeah. can read it right now. Oh, Andy Kindler has um, Andy Kindler has shows tonight and tomorrow night at the Acme Comedy Company in Minneapolis. For tickets and show times, visit Andy. <laughs> visit Acme Comedy. Dot com. Thank you, Andy. Great job. Andy, I've always been a big fan. <laughs> He's one of my three top favorite comedians. Great job. Did I do a good job as you? you? Excellent. No. <laughs> Coming up next, fun summer crafts for kids. We're going to have some easy recipes for teaching young children through their senses. And musical duo Patchouli performs for his line, so I stick go around. To, words to feel good. And I go to the river to let my. Six one two. You see if you your six. <laughs>
Welcome back, everybody. A great way to stimulate young minds. It's all through the senses. Our next guest has some fun and simple projects just to get you started. And ECFE educator Denise Mattis is back, and she's here with the scoop. Welcome back to you. Thank you. Um, the table's all colorful. Kids love color. So yes. you've, you've hooked them in from the very beginning. But talk about why you do something like these projects. Well, summer is a great time for sensory fun for children. That's how young children learn is through their senses. And starting with sight down here at the okay, end. Okay, let's scooch over here. Okay. Um, so, mm -hmm. And all the things that I've done, you can get right out of your kitchen. Easy, mm -hmm. easy summer projects. The first is bubbles. Bubbles are great for babies and for young children. Babies can track them with their eyes mm -hmm. when you blow bubbles for them. Mm -hmm. um, older children, um, it encourages large muscle development because if you blow bubbles, they chase them around. Right, right. Um, it also um, encourages P and B speech sounds, believe it or not. If you blow bubbles, when you make that that oh, with your oh, lips, sure. mm -hmm. it helps speech development mm -hmm. and even cognitive development because if you ask a four or five year old, where did that bubble go? You get some really interesting answers. Mm -hmm. Or describe what does that bubble look like yes. or any kind of thing yes. that just gets them thinking about it being right. watching it go by. And the last thing about bubbles is it's a calming activity because when you blow bubbles, you're exhaling your, your air. So if your children get upset, have them blow some bubbles. Or if you're upset as a mother, which happens <laughs> quite often with children, blow some, blow some bubbles and feel better. Right. Okay. And is this for homemade bubbles? Yes. Um, all you need is some dishwashing detergent, some light um, corn syrup, and water, and you have bubbles. And all the recipes are on the website. Right. We're gonna, we've got all these for you on our website, so you yes. don't have to worry about the measurements. But that's great in a pinch when you want to do it, and the kids are all down because we don't yes. have any bubble stuff. Well, we'll make it. We'll make it. I've done that. Okay. What's Easy next? to do. Um, sound. Babies as young as five months mm -hmm. old can start feeling the rhythm of music. So mm -hmm. a really easy, simple shaker for them. Again, out of your kitchen is an empty spice container with a little bit of rice. Easy for baby to hang on right. to. In the summer, we have lots of festivals and parades. A child could make one out of a deli container, and these are just um, toothpicks. toothpicks in there. Decorate with stickers, a little ribbon. They can bring it along and keep beat with the band. So well, and they like to make their to own do. music at home, yes. too. That, my daughter always loved doing that. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay. And on to touch. Mm -hmm. uh, probably the first way that we finger paint is with our food on our high chair tray. <laughs> <laughs> but as children yeah. get a little bit older, yeah. especially in the summer, a good way to do it is on a cookie sheet. You can do it outside. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And again, ingredients in your kitchen. If you can make pudding, you can make um, finger paints. And it's just cornstarch, sugar, a little food coloring, and water. And so they, they, they get to smear, around. smear it around because young children are usually more concerned about the process of messing with the materials than the end product. Mm -hmm. But if you want to give them an end product, you can just press this on the paper. Oh, sure, and do a thing. Sheet. You know, and, and like something that. that I learned, I remember years ago, it just came to me from ECFE classes. We bought a big cheap on sale discount shower curtain, put it out on the driveway, yes, and let them paint on the shower curtain yes. and then hose everybody including the kids and the shower curtain off. Absolutely. That was fun in the summer. Okay. I forgot that we did that. That was fun. Okay, let's get this one in quickly before we um, go because the ideas are fabulous. Berry picking is a fun idea for families. Uh, there's a website, Pick Your Own. Dot org Minnesota and a good recipe is out of ricotta cheese a little bit of sweetener vanilla and a little grated orange peel over mm -hmm. your berries mm -hmm. um, it's calcium rich and berries are full of antioxidants so it's a great ooh. treat in the summer ooh. ooh and picking berries what could be more fun for the whole family to do well Denise once again you have come up with inexpensive easy fun ideas great for our families thanks for stopping by thank you very much for more information about ECFE classes in your area call 651-582 8402 or log on to showcaseminnesota.com. We've created a link to the Minnesota Department of Education's website where you can find programs throughout the state. And it's time now for First Birthdays. First Birthdays is brought to you by Minnesota College Savings Plan and ECFE. Logan Schroeder is blowing out a candle today. This little man loves playing ball, laughing with his siblings, and going for walks. Happy birthday, Logan, and to everyone celebrating a birthday today.
Stay with us, everybody. Right after the break, a sneak peek at Chan Hassan's new production. We'll be chatting with the stars of Joseph and the amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat right after this. Yeah, um, could you? I think Andy the... I interviewed with you a few times. Oh, for everyone. <laughs> we do it's most another of show. many of the productions. <laughs> yeah, probably. Okay. All right, where are we here? We have three of these in a row. That's kind of easy. Welcome back. Uh, well, it's back by popular demand, the colorful and very upbeat musical Joseph and the amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat is now playing at Chan Hassan Dinner Theaters. And we're very happy to welcome cast members Brendan Bougeau and Jody Carmelli to the show this morning. Welcome Hi, to both of you. Thank you. Uh, not only are you cast members, but you're original cast members and everybody's returned to do this run? Yes, the entire cast yes. is back. <laughs> Why do you love doing this show? Oh, it's so much fun. It's one. It's I think it's the most fun show that I've probably done in my entire life. It's so colorful. The musicals are so entertaining. And it's really just an explosion of energy. And Jody and I get to play for the whole ninety minutes. It's it, it's just it's a constant. Well, force. and looking at the costuming and everything, and we know the music is very familiar. Uh, this, of course, is uh, I can see why. Uh, Brendan, you play Joseph. You're the narrator, um, and. Uh, didn't you think it was freaky that you met Justin Osmond and here Donny Osmond was the definitive yes. Joseph, Tell him I what think. you said. Yeah. We were in the lobby and he goes, that guy looks just like Donny Osmond. And then they came out and said it was Justin Osmond. We were yeah. like, wow. He was so nice to you. Came over and oh, yeah, chatted with you a little bit, which was a lot of fun. He yeah. said you even look like him. Yeah, which is yeah. Um, yeah, always a compliment yeah. to know. And sing like him. Now, we yeah. have to talk about mm -hmm. kids. Yeah, we have to talk about kids because mm -hmm. you've made this really kid-friendly. This is a family show. Yes. Bible story. This is a family show. What are you doing for kids at Chan Hassan? Well, we're bringing two of them up on stage from the audience every night. <laughs> how do they get up there? I mean, how, how do they get selected? There's well, a lottery in the lobby. Yep. Okay, yep. so, so they, they just put their name mm -hmm. in. What ages are we talking about here? 8 to 12, is it? Yeah, it's mm -hmm. 8 to 12. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it, What uh, do they do when they're on stage? <laughs> they're so cute. It's really interesting because everyone is so different. Some of them kind of just sit and stare, <laughs> and some of them are dancing and stealing all the attention. But they get a costume and everything? Yeah, yeah, they get multiple costumes throughout the whole show. They literally become the stars of the show, and Jody and I are just kind of, you know, background. You're just there. Yeah. You're there. You're just here, to be here are there. the children. Yeah. <laughs> well, and we have to say, kids eat free uh, and get in free on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. So there is dinner included with the show. So parents, if you are looking for a way to introduce your children to theater, how, what are the kids' reactions when you can see them? Because you're up close and personal at the Chan Hassan. That's right. When you see the audience of kids. What do they, they do? They love it. 
they're mesmerized. They're they, absolutely mesmerized. They really are. I mean, it's like Christmas for them when we're when I'm walking toward them and bringing them up on stage. They are so excited. Mm. And we oh. do a lot of walking through the the audience, do so you? we get a lot of high fives, and everyone yeah. they want to get picked, you know. <laughs> yes, they're doing. seeing you up close, and as I say, probably for the first time, a lot of them, a real professional play. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you were asking people to bring donations, though, to go along with this. What are they? What should they bring? It's for the Second Harvest Food Shelf. Yes. And uh, so any kind of canned goods, I suppose, or any non-perishable items. Yeah. Um, are always welcome. Yeah. All right. Well, it's perfect. It fits with the story. It is fun for the family. Go, go on Tuesday or Wednesday. Get a nice dinner, Mom, Dad. No Kids are free. Yeah, Tuesday yes. and Wednesday. Aunts, Aunts uncles, it. grandparents. Yeah. <laughs> everybody bring everybody. Come. Yeah, bring the family. <laughs> nice to see you. Come you back too. again with Thanks your next production. Joseph and the amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat is now playing at the Chanhassen Dinner Theater through September the 26th. For tickets or for more information, you can go online to ChanhassenDT.com. Now, if you're the 20th caller to the numbers on your screen, you'll win a pair of dinner and show tickets to the show. Just call 651-989-5273 or toll-free 888-546-8811. If you've won anything from Showcase Minnesota in the past 30 days, you're not eligible to win it this time. Dial carefully, everyone, and good luck to all of you. And, of course, still ahead, there's a lot more yet to come. A celebration of grassroots music. Patchouli is here with a preview of the River Song Music Festival when we return. the lines and burn the page With all the losses, all the wins, all the wars left to begin. With all their love and all their rage Through the eyes of their teenage Yeah, that's why. Welcome back to the show. It's a one-of-a-kind festival that celebrates grassroots sounds. The River Song Music Festival kicks off next weekend in Hutchinson. And here to tell us about all the different activities is that are taking place is Linda Keir. Linda, thank you so much for coming on to the thank show. Uh, tell us a little bit more about the River Song Festival and how it all got started. Well, it's, uh, as they said, it's a celebration of grassroots music, and it's been in the planning for about two years. Mm -hmm. uh, the Hutchinson brothers who founded Hutchinson uh, were very big into music, and we are trying to continue that, uh, make it a community festival, a family-friendly fen festival. And uh, we also, there isn't a place in Minnesota that we were aware of that had folk music. Absolutely. But, and so that would be that. Well, well seeing we'll as Bob ahead. Dylan comes from Minnesota, it makes perfect <laughs> sense to do go. a festival Ab like this, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, let's, let's, and any confusion about the dates, it is not tonight and tomorrow. It starts next Friday. It starts next Friday at 3.30. Uh, uh, three gentlemen from Hutchinson, known as, uh, do a 
reenactment of the Hutchinson Brothers, so they will be starting with uh, three or four songs. Cool. And then um, your guest artist today, Patchouli, will be actually the first ones up after that on Friday at 3.30, 4 o'clock. Goes until about 9 on Friday. Goes all day Saturday from 11 until the, I think our last act comes on at 9. Uh, we will have three stages mm -hmm. on Saturday. Uh, and then on Sunday morning, it's like nine to noonish or so. So this is the maiden voyage. This is this, this is, is the, the original voyage. one. Well, we're it sounds like we're something. Get a good crowd. Well, well, hopefully, you know, Mother Nature will will cooperate with you. And it sounds like a great venue and, and a great idea too. It, it, only yep. to grow and grow and grow as years go on. We are very hopeful of that. Yes, this well, is going to be our. It'll all happen next weekend. Well, so I'm ready for a little bit of musical preview. How about you? I Thanks for too. coming on. Good luck to Thank you. Thank you. You bet. The River Song Music Festival is July 17th through the 19th at the West River Park in Hutchinson for. For more information, visit riversongfestival.org. Now with a preview, here is Patchouli. Take some time, unwind, unravel your mind, and walk the labyrinth through till it brings them back to you. Take some time, unwind, unravel your mind, and walk the labyrinth through till it brings them back to you. I know you're looking for some change. But like a desert holds the rain For a dry spell or two Let me hold it here for you And trace these lines through what happened Like a topographical map Then feeling everything you've known Let it bring you right back home And take some time Unwind, unravel your mind and walk the labyrinth through till it brings the back to you.
Hey, we'd like to thank all of our guests for appearing on today's show. No name paid for today's segment. And if you'd like to have your business appear on the show, we would love to have you here. Check out ShowcaseMinnesota.com to find out more. That week went fast. It did. Already it was Friday. a fun week. Ready for the week. weekend, though. And coming up Monday at 10, Oscar winner Timothy Hutton. More on the second season of his hit cable series, Leverage. That's right. Uh, plus, we're going to uh, talk about mm. barbecue sauce taste testing. Ooh, we're going to have to arm wrestle for that one <laughs> with the ladies from the FM 107's Weekly Dish Program. I already know the best. I know the best. And do-it-yourself arrangements, we'll simple ideas there. for your home. That's coming up Monday. That'll do it for us. Yeah, we'll i got to say one more thing. Okay. Quick thing. Um, if you go to Joseph the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat, bring cash. <laughs> Give them a dollar or two for the donations for the food shelf. Don't bring canned goods. We had that wrong. Don't bring actual food. Just bring a little cash. They collected $10,000 last year, last time during the run. All right, we'll leave you now with more music from Patchouli. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you on Bye, Monday. Everybody. Like a small town, not a big day Where the flags fly in the candy parade We're having my hand on Porter King The princess floats on the crowd's array You make me feel You make me feel You make me feel Alive, 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 alive in 